Uh, welcome to Tea with Jesus. My name is Cheryl Howard. I am also the CEO of Get Your Life Back Inspirational Life Coaching, where I do Inspirational Life Coaching, actually, aka Christian Life Coach. Um, thanks for joining in. And um, well, I just try to, my job is to come in and try to inspire you to push you into your purpose tonight. But whether you have something to do, an assignment that's purpose for you in the earth or your spiritual assignment that's God that's God but God uses us to push each other he uses us to encourage each other to do what we need to do because we are a body we are collective in the body we are a community of people who come and support one another and that's what it's all about it's not about you being an island it's not about you um, doing everything on your own we need each other we need to be supportive amen so um Get your life back, inspiration, life coaching is just that. I want to talk about that inner work that we need to do. Dealing with healing, healing emotionally, healing psychologically, and not only the emotional aspect, but also working on building yourself up, walking into your purpose, living out your dreams, setting the path, you know, that God has ordained and aligned for you, making sure that you're in alignment with what is in purpose for you. Amen. And so part of doing that work is dealing with the emotional issues that we have. Guess what? Because when we put when we become when we come into the position of where we're supposed to be, when we're walking into our purpose, if we don't deal with a lot of inside stuff, or we don't, if we're not healing from our past relationships and and we have a lot of baggage and trauma, it comes out. When you're on that platform, when you're finally in that place and you're about to take off, if you're not dealing with a lot, and I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we battle with, especially women, we, and men have their stuff too. They have their stuff, and sometimes we forget that. You know, a lot of times we always want to point the finger at them, but a lot of times we have gotten into relationships where we weren't even ready, and we put so much responsibility on that man to be like our savior, our knight in shining armor to rescue us, and when he cannot do that, then we want to point the finger to him. It was him. It was him. But sometimes, a lot of times, it's us. And you know what? And I tell some of the young teenagers sometimes that I, I coach with and I do counseling with, you can't get so angry at the boy, at the guy. Because just like you didn't have a father who might not have been there, or maybe he's been there physically, but he haven't been there for you emotionally. So the same story for that boy. He might not have had an example. He might not have had a representation, a role model of what it means to be a whole man healed. Know what it is to take care of things, to take care of a woman, to take care of. First, you start with little things. I was telling someone today, I was telling a parent, it is is a good idea for you to get your boy a pet because it's in that those experiences with raising a pet. That boy can learn what it means to take care of something. You know, to take care of an animal teaches him to nurture something, to help something develop and to cultivate something. And we need those things. A lot of us hadn't had those. We didn't have those examples or experiences when we were young. So and so now we deal with it later on in life. It all comes out. Things, areas that we are undeveloped in. It all comes out. And unfortunately, it comes out in our relationships. We don't know how to relate to the opposite sex. We don't even know how to relate sometimes to the same sex because we got all these issues. We get into these catty, I call them catty fight situations, and we become competitive with each other. So understand that a lot of us have the same issues. A lot of us carrying low self-esteem. A lot of us are carrying insecurities. A lot of us are wearing our heart on our sleeves and others can see it. And so now you're walking, and so now you're like a walking target. People can see your unhealed scars, your wounds. And so these things we need to deal with. Now that's the emotional and spiritual side. Now as far as working on those external things, like I said, things that you dreamed of doing, walking in your purpose, that career or that business. Maybe you're called to be an entrepreneur. We're going to be talking about, again, emotional health. Um, healthy leadership because a lot of times God has called a lot of those women into leadership but again if we're not dealing with a lot of these issues our leadership won't even be strong we are exemplify we will uh, exert or assert poor leadership 
and other people will see it and then we'll become ineffective not realizing that we're self-sabotaging our own purpose we're self-sabotaging our mandate things that we we are called to do and we are actually gifted to do but we have to do the the preliminary work you, amen we got to deal with a lot of things and a lot of times I've noticed people get put and pushed into positions that they're not quite ready for they anointed to do it they gifted to do it but it's, it's premature it's not time and you can't give birth to something when it's when it's premature what happens is you're vulnerable to a lot of things when you give birth to a baby that's premature they're susceptible to a lot of illness and diseases and sickness because they may be underdeveloped and they still need to grow in a lot of areas and sometimes that happens with us we get into positions we we step into things that we're not quite ready for leadership number one you're responsible you're an example and I, I think a lot of people forget about that part of leadership we focus on getting before people thanks for joining in hot cocoa while well, I got my hot tea <laughs> for tea with Jesus cocoa is, I love it. I love cocoa um, we get into positions too prematurely and we're not ready for these positions. And a lot of times, like I said, I see this happen a lot of times in church, in, in different organizations. And as yet the person, you can see, they have what it takes inside of them. But there's still a lot of stuff that they're not dealing with. So now they don't know how to care and how to nurture. They don't know how to be good leaders. They don't know how to relate to people. Um, there's a lot of issues. You see the issue of domineerance. You know, they want to be dominating. They want they become possessive because they're still dealing with insecurity and low self-esteem. And those are the bottom lines of it. And fear. So because of fear, you see the secondary and, and tertiary emotions start to ar arise. And so they don't even know how to deal with people. They're always clashing with people. And every time they go somewhere, and I've talked to people, this happens to them all the time. Every place they go to, they have a problem. And so instead of projecting on everybody else, Sometimes we have to do, well, all of the time, we need to do the, we need to examine ourselves and see what is going on inside of me. Because I seem to have this problem everywhere I go, and it's hard. We don't always want to deal with the truth because it does hurt. But see, this is surgery. This is going inside. If you really want to be healed, I'm talking to the women who want to be healed. You're tired of walk, living in the same cycles of patterns of mistakes and bad, poor choices and bad behavior. So you sabotage your female relationship and you sabotage your relationships with the male with a male and you keep it's the same thing and yes we heard it all the time it's called insanity and you keep doing the same thing and you keep expecting a different result that is insane you cannot so this is what the workshops is all about so dealing with this what I, I started to call it a mastermind but what happens we're going to get together and we're going to talk about all this stuff I'm the type of person let's get everything out on the table I want it to be a safe place when I give this um, women's empowerment workshop which is free. I want it to be a safe place for women to come down and, and let's get all, let's deal with the scars. Let's know the scars is when you heal. Let's deal with the wounds. Let's deal with these open wounds that we're walking around with so we can be healed. So we can do things effectively and, and great and with excellence and we can impact people and we can leave a mark on people that cannot be erased. You know, because a lot of us, God has positioned us or has called us to walk into a place where we can have a positive impact on people where other people can be healed, can be set free, can be loose from their own strongholds. So we have to be loose first before we can try to go loose somebody else. Amen. We need to be healed first. It's bad seeing a person who's not healed trying to help other people come into a place of healing. <laughs> and it's not saying that you can't always do that because sometimes while you're working on your own stuff, God will use you to help other people on your way. But I'm saying for us who want to hurry up and, and take these roles of leadership and do all these great things, but we don't want to do this inside work. So that's what um, this workshop is going to be about that. And it's going to be about how to translate and transfer our skills and our talent into our purpose, into our careers, into um, our uh, entrepreneurial goals, things that you want to do, become your own boss. You know, we got to deal with the spirit of procrastination. I mean, things that we don't want to really deal with. I've dealt with procrastination. Now, I'm a tenacious person. When my mind is set to do something, I'll do that. But sometimes you could be 
procrastinate in other areas. Those other areas that I would procrastinate in. And I got sick and tired of it. Like, God, I got to fight this battle. I'm tired of this. I said, And I, that's when it came to my mind. The procrastination is a killer of dreams. It's like a murderer. Because it just hinders you and it just stops you. And sometimes you become stagnant. And you miss out on blessings. You miss out on opportunities when they come. And because you procrastinated, now you got to wait. Now, a lot of times, God will bring another opportunity back. Because when you decide, you know what, I got to change this. I got to do what I need to do. So I don't end up doing the same thing over again and miss out on a blessing. And then sit and get upset when I see somebody else surpass me and step into their blessing or their purpose. And I sabotage my own blessing. It's that kind of pattern that you want to break. Sometimes it's generational. So we're going to talk about generational curses. Generational patterns of mistakes. Most of our families have them. But when you in Christ, you can break every one of them. You don't have to walk in that. You don't have to be a diabetic because your parents was a diabetic. You can do everything right. You can eat right. You can exercise. You can live a healthy lifestyle. And you don't have to develop that. So that's a liar. For I don't, and Even when the doctor says that, and I get it. I get it scientifically. I get it generationally. If we don't take care of ourselves, yes, we can inherit the same illnesses. But see, I know a Savior. I know somebody who came to break every chain, every fetter. I know someone who died for all of us and said, with and by his stripes, we are healed. So I want to stand on that word, but not only stand on that word, I have a responsibility to myself to do what I need to do to keep myself from, you know, some things we're going to battle with. Some things are just, you're just going to battle with. But I don't have to invite sickness into myself. I don't have to invite sabotaging uh, or, or procrastination and all these other things that can also pass down from generation. I don't have to walk in that because my parents or grandparents walked in that. So we coming against all that stuff, you know. And part of the ministry that God has given me is, is, is um, deliverance and healing. And I'm one who've been healed and been delivered from things. And God has blessed me and anointed my hands to do a work for him. He gets all the glory, not me. But it's just understanding who you are. And see, that's another thing I want to deal with. A lot of times when you walk into insecurity and you are in the presence of someone who has confidence and confidence in God, a lot of times you're misinterpreted as somebody who is being conceited or being, it has nothing to do that. When you're confident, you're able to recognize who God called you to be. You're humble, but you also recognize, yes, this is what God called me to be. And it's come with, with that comes responsibility. So I am responsible. God all the time God has to chasten me and remind me of the work that He's given me. And when I fall short, Trust me, the Holy Spirit says, Sure, you're falling off. You're not standing on your post. You need to go back in prayer. You're getting lackadaisical. You're getting to relax. You need to get back because I got things for you to do and deter us from our um, call, from our assignment. But see, it's okay when you have a relationship with the Father because He will woo you and call you right back in. And that's the wonderful thing about it. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But the Bible said He chastens those whom He loves. So I'm like, God, I, I, I welcome your chastening because it tells me you love me. I welcome your discipline because it tells me that you love me. With love comes discipline. And we don't want that part of love. We want all the, the mushy and emotional good stuff, good feeling. But we don't want the discipline. I want the discipline because guess what? It makes me a better person. It brings me to a higher level. It calls me to come up higher. Not bring God down to my stuff, but bring me up. <laughs> to where he want me to be and the things that he want us to do. So I want to talk about all of those things. I'm familiar with dysfunction. That's another thing we need to talk about. And that's why we keep get, finding ourselves in the same predicament. In the same type of toxic relationships. Because we're familiar with that. And I mentioned in another broadcast, it's like the children of Israel. They were familiar with being in bondage. So when they became into an unfamiliar place, when God was bringing them out, even though they had to go through the wilderness for their own reasons, we know about the story of murmuring and complaining or whatever, God still had a purpose in play. He still wanted them to walk into their purpose. He still wanted them to walk into the promise, the promised land that he promised them. God is not slack concerning his promises. So, but sometimes we, we end up taking a detour because of our our own doings and so now we have to learn the lesson all over again and go down the long path when we could have went straight 
in the just straight path that God had laid out for us. So a lot of times we find ourselves in those same situations and that we're familiar with something because we because I guess it's not even I guess in those type of situations where you were in a toxic or dysfunction, you knew what to expect. You knew what was happening and you was used to that. Now you in this place, it's like women who get these good men, but they're so used to being around the wrong men who treat them and abuse them. When they get this guy who treats them like a king, that it's uncomfortable for them. Thanks for joining in, Reverend Crutch. They, um, they, don't, they don't even know how to receive a good man who loves them, who knows how to nurture them, who's secure within himself. So he's not threatened. As a matter of fact, he will help build you up. He wants to see you prosper. He wants to see you walk together so you can walk in agreement, so you can both come together and have an impact on other people. So, but see what happens when you become that healed whole person and you find your identity in Christ, then now your discernment is on point. So you can already see dysfunction when it when you encounter it. You can say, oh no, mm -mm, mm -mm. there's too many things going on. You need to be healed. It don't have to be something negative you have to project to the person, but you're able to discern now because now your eyes are open. Now you are healed spiritually and emotionally. And so now you become self-aware. So now you know, you read the, you see the danger signs and you pay attention. You see the red lights and you pay attention. You don't make excuses no more because of your insecurity or low self-esteem or your um, past behavior or past relationships that was dysfunctional or abusive or whatever the case may be now you're able to recognize it and go you know what because I, I witnessed it I've met men <laughs> you know I, I'm single too now I'm a divorced um, single person and and the reason why I'm running these workshops because I know what it takes. God has kept me and have taught me things in my own singleness. And my desire is to help women become empowered. I can't empower anybody, but I can give them the tools to in, for them to apply to their own lives to become empowered. Amen. And the word is the number one tool to empower you. And you know, at the end of the day, like they say, you can hear a good message. You can read the scripture. But if you don't apply the word, you will never see change. But going back to what I was talking about. So I'm able to detect. I'm able to discern without even the person opening their mouth. And I can already see. Wow. Okay. You know, when you listen, when the Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. See, when you, when, you, when you deal with a lot of stuff, now you're able to hear. You're like, wow, now I can hear the voice of the Lord. Now I'm in attunement with the Holy Spirit. Okay, and I can hear God say, this person needs to be healed. This man needs to be healed. Um, and I hear it. Now, I don't automatically speak it, but I can hear it when I'm speaking to, say, a particular male that I might have met. And it comes out. And, and I can hear, I'm like, wow, he's not ready for a relationship right now. He still needs to deal. So what happens is I'll just end up ministering to the individual. And again, leaving a mark that cannot be erased because at the end of the day, he's my brother in Christ. At the end of the day, don't need to be any bad blood between us. You just know for yourself that you're in a better place now and you're no longer going to entangle yourself with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back to that place. Don't go back to that place. Because I like in, it's in Proverbs 31, but I like the 10th verse when it says, who can find a virtuous and capable wife? So I want to talk about being that virtuous woman, meaning you in a position to be found and found to be virtuous. And to be virtuous, we have to deal with all the stuff that I talked about earlier. And then you can be found. Somebody will see that in you and say, wow, that's wife material right there. That's the kind of woman I want to have on my side. Amen. So becoming that virtuous woman, not really getting too much into the whole relationship, but just getting into the characteristics of a virtuous. Looking up the word virtuous. Virtuous means more, some of the words moral, st having a standard, non-addictive behavior. Because I looked at the scripture and it says, let me see, where is it at? The non-addictive. First of all, it says her husband can trust her. He can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. You want to be this virtuous woman. She will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good and not harm. Sometimes when we not heal, we bring all that unhealed stuff into a relationship and we end up doing more harm than good. So sometimes we can bring harm into a relationship all the days of her life. She finds, okay, so it just talks about how um, she's busy and she's not, she doesn't procrastinate. And so she's tenacious and doing the things that she needs to do. So she finds 
she uh, gets up early dawn to prepare breakfast for her household. But this, and so I don't want to focus on the breakfast. I want to focus on she gets up early to do these things. She's proactive. That that's probably a better word. She's proactive. She doesn't wait to be governed by somebody. She does this on her own. Um, what's another one? She goes to inspect the field. So she uses wisdom. She has discernment. She goes to inspect things. She uses good judgment. Uh, she, she's able to see what's good and what's not good. What's quality and what's not quality. She's a hard worker, the Bible says. She's energetic and strong. She's busy. She extends helping. So she's a person who helps others. She's not self-centered. She's not selfish. And see, when again, when you come out of your own stuff, you're able to lend yourself to other people. You able, you're, you're so at a place where you can be a help to other people. You, you can serve others. You have a desire to help other people. It talks about how creative she is. She makes her own bedspread. We're not going to focus on the bedspread, but we're going to focus on how creative she is. Um, and she's clothed in strength and dignity. So this is a woman of integrity. This is a woman of integrity. It's something I want to cover because when I when I cover that how she's non-addictive, there's something I saw in the scripture, and I think it was in Ruth and Boaz when I was reading the book of Ruth, chapter three, verse eleven. What did it say? I don't know. But I'm gonna go into that into the workshop. I'm not gonna get in that, into that now. But I also want to glean from Ruth. Just being in a place where she was positioning herself to even become that wife for Boaz. There's a lot of things she had to do. One thing I love about the story is that she was submissive. She was humble before God. She wanted to serve God. This is one of the reasons why she followed Naomi, her mother-in-law, when her husband died. And she wanted to follow Naomi's God. But what I like about it is that she was willing to listen to Naomi's wisdom. Being an older woman, she respected her. So it also lets me know she was teachable. She was able to hear. So every time Naomi would tell her something, she would listen. She would say, I'll do as you say. And so Naomi gave her some wisdom and instruction on how to prepare herself and how to adorn herself when she goes back into the field again, the threshing floor again, where Boaz is going to be. She listened to the wise words of Naomi. And when he, she was telling her things such as, don't let them see you until a certain time. You got to wait for the right time. You see, you have to be positioned. You have to take care of all the preliminary work again. So you can be ready for that meeting time that divine connection that God has for you whatever it is and I'm only talking about a, a husband it could be a, a position a job a career a, 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 anything just being in a place to be able to receive it to be able to handle it even money to be in a position to even handle finances because now you got rid of all those bad habits such as bad spending or, or whatever and where you just don't have a good relationship with money now you at a place where you have a vision you have a goal you have a purpose Purpose. You're able to organize your finance, organize yourself. You know, you know how to do a budget. You know how to look at your finances and know what you can spend and what not to spend. See, this is all a part of the having good qualities of being a, having good qualities of a wife and being ready. So. Ruth was ready, so by the time she met Boaz, and he seen that, he seen that in her, and he complimented her on those things that he saw, those wonderful characteristics, and she's also described as a virtuous woman in the book of Ruth as well, so uh, Boaz was attracted to that. You know, even though he was trying to prepare her and said maybe she'll be um, better to marry a, a kinsman, another person who's called the kinsman redeemer at the time, it ended up, and it was actually was ordained for him to take her as his wife. And then the household was favored, and the rest of the story is all good. You got to read the book of Rufus. I think, I believe it's after Joshua before you get into Job and all the rest of the book. But it's a good story to read. But just gleaning from those stories, and then the, the five foolish virgins or uh, bridesmaids, and, and the five wise bridesmaids, the ones who prepared themselves and had got the extra oil, olive oil to put into their lamps. Versus or compared to the five foolish women who just decided to procrastinate and fall asleep. So they wasn't prepared to meet the bridegroom. They wasn't prepared at all. So now they develop. So now what happens is you, you start to develop this mentality uh, of a begging spirit. Because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. So now you're looking for somebody to give you something because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. So now you're like, can you ask in these five foolish woman now asking the five wise women can they get some of their oil because they were supposed to get out and make sure they bring enough oil with them to put into their lamps to go meet the groomsmen so they wasn't ready so when the five wise women went into the gate 
the gate was closed so the five foolish women, women couldn't get in because they didn't follow instructions. They didn't do the work. They wasn't prepared. And so now they can't be angry at nobody but themselves. So this is all the stuff that we have to just overcome and, and deal with and talk about. Ages 21 and up. Single women. This is for the single women. So whether you've been divorced or you're a widow or you, you've never been married but you're single and you need some direction or purpose or you just want to be empowered with a lot of other women coming together. Again, I want it to be an atmosphere where we esteem one another. I have a lot of things I want to do with the women um, just to build up each other because that's that's what it's all about, building up one another, esteeming one another higher than ourselves as the word tells us to do and become empowered and everybody just sharing and exchanging ideas and empowering. You never know who you're going to meet when you go to the, when I'm sure many of you probably have been to some wonderful workshops and mastermind sessions and you met some wonderful people actually who were the key key people to your purpose to you stepping into your destiny and your purpose or whatever you want to call it and you met the person it was an individual that you were supposed to meet at the right time so you two can connect and that person can help take you into your purpose nobody does everything by themselves somebody had to help somebody even going to a job interview you need the person to interview you need the person to give you the job so we need each other and so I want to have that kind of atmosphere and kind of environment. So again, go to getwhylifeback.com. I have the information where you can sign up, send me an email. I can put you on the list and I can know exactly who's coming to the Single Woman of Purpose workshop titled In the Meantime. Because we come together for a purpose. We're on purpose. And even help those who may not know what their purpose is. You know what? They can be inspired by those who kind of have a vision and an idea of where they want to go. I am one of the visionary. So um, I like to help other women kind of find what is their purpose? What has God? They have those questions. Now God is the ultimate one to answer all of that. But again, he uses us. And I may just be a, a instrument or a... Um, yeah, instrument is the best word, a conduit that God is willing to use to kind of help lead you into his purpose for your life. We are all helpers of one another, and that's what it's all about. But I just want to say good night. You guys have a good evening. I'm going to cut my broadcast off here. You can still get